right, so what will happen is if you sent us a question earlier with the hashtag the MMA hour, send it now. I'll weed through them while Rick looks at his picks. Brendan's writing me on Gchat. He's so sly. Um, and uh, I'll just read them off the page. We'll take the other ones from the website. Cool? Cool. Cool. What do you got? <laughs> Buzzkill just wrote to me on Gchat. Yeah, my bad. I killed the buzz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, Brendan. Um, it was a setting on the encoder. Yeah, whatever. Okay. What do you got? UFC um, on Fuel TV 9. Yeah, this is this is an interesting one. I... I I, hmm. I'll just go through them one by one, and then I'll give like a recap at the end. Gustafson is currently still the favorite at minus two twenty-five. Musasi is plus one eighty-five. Now going into the fight, I thought that Gustafson is rightfully where he should be um, in terms of the betting line. I thought that he should be about a two and a half to one favorite. Um, but now with this new information, it, it definitely affects betting. Um, a lot of people were counting Musasi out. I don't think that he outclasses Musasi to that um, great a degree. Uh, I think that people have had success punching um, Alexander Gustafsson. And Musasi is very good at punching other people in the face. Um, plain and simple. I don't see this being much of a grappling match. Now, I know that Musasi um, is known for not having great takedown defense. And if Gustafsson so chooses, I imagine that he could pretty easily get this to the ground. Um, but I think that it's going to take place mostly on the feet. And I think that um, let's let's discount the iron, the uh, the cut or, you know, whatever uh, injuries we're talking about here for a second. I think that Gustafsson um, takes a decision uh, over Musasi, outstriking him. Um, having, but you can't ignore that. I mean, it, well, it, I'm just saying this, this is my breakdown without without the injury. But, but, but the injury happened. I'm going to give the, the breakdown with the injury as well. But that makes Hold no the, sense. This well, is of course, a part- I'm saying this is what it would be, and okay. this is what it is now. All right. Um, so now, in terms of betting, I think that there might be a little bit of value on Musasi just because of the nature of the injury. Um, it being a cut and all, it's something that you can focus on, uh, and it's something that you can visibly open up to end a fight quickly. Um, so if this cut is as bad as I imagine it to be, Musasi has one aim and and it makes his his game plan very easy and i think that it wasn't as far um in terms of what the betting public might have thought um initially i think that musasi had a chance i don't think it was a a big chance i would have favored gustafson but i think the line would have been about right i don't i didn't see much value on gustafson um but now I see a little bit of value on Mosasi just because of the nature of the injury. Now I'm not. Oh, sh- have you noticed a change? Uh, let me. I, you, they actually have the the graph here. Let me oh, see. Oh, cool. At one point it got up to plus two twenty five. So Musasi has come down a little bit, back to about where it originally opened up at plus one eighty. So he's at plus one eighty five. Oh, that's cool. Um, Gustafson opened at minus two sixty, and now he's at minus two twenty five. Uh, so that means that the bets did come in on him, but I, I imagine this is going to change actually quite a bit closer to fight time, assuming that the opponents remain the same, assuming that Gustafson remains in this fight. Okay. But my f- my final evaluation on this is I see slight value in Musasi um, if Gustafson fights with the cut, and I think that he would be able to hit that cut and, and open him back up. Um, now, on on the other end of the spectrum, as I was saying, Gustafson could turn this into a grappling match and i think that he would win there uh although i thought musasi did a great job on on bottom um against king mo i don't think that that's going to look too great um for the judges and i think if gustafson makes it a wrestling match he still um controls the fight so the next fight we have listed here is pearson couture okay why is that not uh well the order here is pickett easton but no. pearson couture pearson couture um Pearson is minus 400. Couture is plus 325. Now, I think that Pearson's going to win this fight. I'm fairly confident in that. Um, I was very impressed by Couture, uh, his fight with KJ Nunes. I don't think he won that fight, but I was very impressed. I thought KJ was going to be able to walk through him pretty much. Uh, so I'm, I don't think that this line accurately represents the fight. I think there is a little bit of value on Couture. Um, personally, I can't I can't take any uh, flyers on Couture just because I don't have enough money to play with. Um, 
when I have a very strong feeling that Pearson's going to win this fight. Uh, but I don't like Pearson at minus 400. I think he's going to be able to keep it standing and, and pretty much execute a similar game plan to what um, KJ Nunes was able to, land the harder, stronger punches, um, while Couture is going to control the activity. I think he's going he's gonna to push forward, as he always does, but I think that Pearson's going to be able to avoid enough damage and, and win a decision. Um, but I don't like him at minus 400. I, I think that's an, almost outrageous, honestly, after how... Mm -hmm. Decent Couture looked against uh, KJ Nunes. Decent, he looked pretty good. Although I do think he I lost do. The I fight. don't think he won the fight. Yeah, though. yeah. Um, I guess it's fair to call it decent. Well, just ruined the flow there. Oh. Um, well, I mean, you because you, it sounded like a backhanded compliment. No, I I think that there's value on Couture, but I can't. I personally can't um, bet on him. Um, but I but I see a little bit of value because I don't think Pearson should be a four to one favorite. Fair enough. Um, the next fight, definitely looking, looking forward to this one, uh, Pickett and Easton. Brad Pickett is currently the favorite at minus 165. Easton is plus 145. Big fight, 135 pounds. Yeah, this is a huge fight. I think, I think that that line's about right. I, I like Pickett a little bit in this one. Um, just because, uh, just like Dana White, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Pickett, and I, and I really like the way he fights. Um, but I feel like he was a little bit exposed... Um, in his previous fight against Wineland, who who kind of picked him apart. I mean, and, and Pickett, it, Pickett's known for being able to, you know, create angles, get inside, um, use his excellent boxing. But um, Wineland was able to keep him on the end of his jab. Now, obviously, Easton doesn't have the same build, isn't going to be able to execute the same game plan. But I think that his level acti of activity is going to be tough Um for Pickett to deal with. And the other thing is Pickett can always rely on his submission game, his great grappling game, um, very underrated in that area uh, when it comes, if the fight comes to that. But Easton is equally um, impressive in his grappling. He, he's, he's a good take, he's good at getting takedowns. He's a good uh, wrestler. Um, he's also good defensively in terms of getting takedowns. He's a black belt um, in jujitsu. So um, I think that this, this fight's going to take place standing, and it's going to come down to the pace of Easton versus uh, Pickett being a little more technical. It's the brawler versus boxer uh, kind of matchup that we've, we've seen a lot in the past. And I favor Pickett slightly, um, but I'm not sure if I'm going to bet on him. I might even put a bet on Easton, uh, but that's yet to come. I, I still got to think about that one a little bit. But in terms of the fight, I think it's going to be a great fight. Yeah, and, and, and what's interesting about this division is, I mean, look at Eddie Wineland. His first two UFC fights, he lost... Two wins later, he's fighting for the title. It's probably the most wide open division in the U. Eh, I guess flyweight would would be more wide open. And then there's the women's bantamweight. But you get my point. It's pretty wide open. So even though you lost, didn't look good in your last fight, it's very easy to climb that that ladder rather quickly at 135. Definitely agree there. Um, moving on, we have Matt Mitrione and Phil DeFries. Huge fight. Mitrione thinks. <clears throat> Uh, and I wanted to get him on the show, of course, but he's actually flying right now. He thinks that a loss it could be the end. Well, it, it, that would be three in a row? It would be three. I mean, there was a big stretch there. He lost to Congo, came back a year and a half later. Oh, lost right, to right, Nelson. Right. But, yeah, I mean, it would be three. Um, Matt Mitrione is currently the favorite, minus 320. And Phil DeFries is plus 260, the underdog. Um, this is another one like the uh, Pearson-Couture fight where I do favor Mitrione but I don't think he should be this big a favorite. So I do see some value in DeFries uh, in the sense that Mitrione is a striker and DeFries is a grappler. And if uh, Mitrione's takedown defense, you know, hasn't improved to the level where he's going to be able to keep DeFries off him, um, there's no reason to believe that DeFries can't win this fight. So I don't think, I favor Mitrione slightly. I picked him against Roy Nelson, which ended up being a, a very large mistake. Um, but I do still favor him in this fight. But at minus 320, I don't think there's any value on Matt Mitrione. And I think the value is on DeFries here. Wow. So I might be betting on him um, and I might stay away completely. But it's, it's an underdog or uh, stay away bet. Uh, there will not be a bet on Matt Mitrione here. Right. Although I do favor him very, very slightly. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of other interesting fights on this card. Um, Diego Brandao and Pablo Garza. Diego Brandao is minus 205. Garza is plus 165. Um, I, I think Brandao is going to win. I, I like his uh, style. I, I like um, him as a fighter. But I think that Garza ha looked really, really good um, in his last fight. And I was very impressed. And just the, his body type creates so many... Um, 
mismatches in terms of how people match up with him stylistically. He, he's, he's so good at using his size, um, especially in his, his last couple of fights, that I think that I'm probably going to either stay... This is another one where I'm going to stay away or take the dog. I, I, don't, I don't see Brandau having much value at minus 205, um, but I'm not in love with Garza at plus 165. So again, this is going to be one where I stay away or I take the underdog. Also, kind of interesting, it seems like every single fight has a line on a Monday. I think, yeah, um, I think the whole card has a line. Maybe they, 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 what was it? When was the last, I guess the last one was two weeks ago, so maybe they had some time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me just pick and choose maybe. Uh, Conor McGregor. Oh, yeah. Uh, Marcus Brimage. This is the real main event. Conor McGregor is minus 175 favorite. Marcus Brimage is plus 145 underdog. God, and it's on Facebook. What a crime. Can't I wait for this fight. I don't know what to make of this one betting-wise because... I don't know enough about Conor McGregor. And now I've watched his fights, and I'm going to watch more um, and get a little more educated. But I don't see why coming in he would be such a favorite over Marcus Brimage. I would I would think that it would be more of a coin flip. Um, Brimage has proven himself. He's proven that he can throw bombs for sure. Um, if Jimmy Hedis wasn't so tough, uh, he would have gotten knocked out. And he's proven that he can use his own wrestling, prevent takedowns. He's, he's a very well-rounded and very uh, talented fighter. And I'm not sure why a guy coming into the UFC um, without any experience, you know, in the big leagues would be a favorite over him. So I'm thinking that there will be a play on Marcus Brimage. Now, that said, I've been very impressed with what I've seen from Conor McGregor, but the level of competition just isn't the same. Sure. Um, so that might be one where I'm, I'm leaning toward Brimage. Uh, and I'm and I fully expect that I could be wrong. If if I do uh, bet on Brimage and McGregor comes out and starches him, it wouldn't surprise me just because um, I've been very impressed by him. But the experience factor is completely in Brimage's favor. I can't wait for that fight. And it seems like Brimage really has a chip on his shoulder because he feels like the UFC is not showing him any love. You know, beating guys like Jimmy Hedis and Maximo Blanco. I mean, Brimage is Brim, Brimage is doing really well in the UFC and. I think he deserves to be higher than the Facebook card. But these fuel ones, I mean, it's not your typical Facebook because there's no undercar- televised undercard, if you know what I'm saying. So yep. I don't think you should take it too personally. I agree. I think that's that's it in terms of uh, what I'll preview. Um, but follow me on Twitter, and I will um, post some bets for these fights. And, and this is going to be one where I might have a lot of bets in a lot of places because um, the lines are not – there's no huge favorites other than um, – Ross Pearson and uh, Peralta over Corisani is actually a very big favorite. Um, but other than that, the lines are relatively close, um, so I might be putting down quite a few bets. And let me ask you, before I give you the times for uh, the, the uh, UFC and Fuel TV 9 uh, listings on, on Saturday, like I said, it's, it's pretty jam-packed. There's Bellator, there's Invicta, there's 1FC. Are you looking at any of these, or are we just sticking with UFC here? Um, I'm definitely thinking about the Bellator card. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, de- I'm definitely thinking about the Invicta card. Now, I've said that in the past and ended up not betting um, because it all depends on the lines. I, can't, I can tell you that I'm thinking about these fights, and I am, um, but the, the numbers have to make sense. Um, for Invicta, I imagine that there's going to be some lines that I like. Uh, Bellator is a little more questionable just because um, sometimes there's guys on the card who don't have enough fights that I, I wouldn't feel comfortable um, betting. But but Invicta has a lot of fighters that um, we've seen a history on, and, and I'm comfortable laying down some bets. So more likely Invicta than Bellator, but um, there's a possibility for both. Will they post lines for a card like Invicta? Uh, it will be like right before weigh-ins, um, very close to the, to the fight. So you may have to put some picks out there before your usual, usual Friday spot because their card is on Friday, yep. the Bellator on, on Thursday, all that stuff. All right, so look out for it. It's uh, twitter.com slash New York Rick. As I said, and are you doing WrestleMania or not? No, I am not doing right. WrestleMania. Well, that's a shame. Uh, Bellator 95, 1FC 8, Invicta FC 5, UFC of Field TV 9, WrestleMania, Syracuse, Michigan, Knicks versus Thunder. I may not get off the couch. It's an unbelievable weekend of television coming up, and I will not be anywhere. I will be in New York. I won't be at any of them. Just taking it in. Doing stuff from home, but not on the scene, as I usually am. So a lot to look forward to this coming weekend. 
and uh, follow New York Rick on Twitter to get more of his picks.